This question was asked by a couple of viewers on a video which explained how to get data from a closed Excel workbook using ActiveX data objects. In that video, we took the contents of the closed workbook into a record set and then wrote the contents of the record set into a new worksheet. These two viewers wanted to know is it possible to take the contents of the record set and write them straight into an array, bypassing the worksheet output entirely. And it certainly is possible to do that using a built-in method of the record set object. To get started with this video, I'm going to assume that you already know at least the basics of working with ActiveX data objects. And if not, then you might want to watch this video to get yourself up to speed. It explains all the basic stuff you need to know. Assuming you've done that part already, let me show you the files we'll use to demonstrate this technique. We've got a basically empty workbook saved as a macro enabled file, and there is some code in there already, which I'll show you in a moment. I'll post a link in the video description so that you can download the files we'll work with in this video. This file is going to connect to a workbook called Movies, which has a single worksheet called Sheet 1, with about 1200 films listed there with various categories of information. I'm just going to close that file down. Both those files are saved in the same folder. I've already written some code in the, um, in the empty workbook, so let's have a quick look at that first. If I head into the Developer tab and open up the Visual Basic Editor, I've set a reference to the Microsoft ActiveX Data Objects library. So if I head up to Tools References, just to show you that I've already referenced that library, and I've written some basic code to connect to that workbook called Movies in the same folder as this workbook, using a, an ADODB connection, and then loading everything from Sheet 1 into a new record set. What we'd ordinarily do, and what we did in the previous video, in between opening and closing the record set, was write the contents of the record set into a worksheet. What we're going to do here is take the contents of the record set and load it straight into an array. Let's start by declaring the empty variant array. If I head up to the top of the subroutine and at the end of the existing list of variables, say something simple like dim a. That by itself is sufficient, but if you prefer, you can also add as variant to the end, but that's what you'll get anyway if you just say dim a. Then, after I've opened up the record set, I can say a equals rs dot, and then use the built in method called get rows. The get rows method returns an array from the record set, and that really is all there is to it. Just to demonstrate how that works, I'm going to set a breakpoint on that line and then hit the F5 key or click the play button or the run button to run up to that point. So you can see we have our empty A variant array. If I hit F8 to step through that line of code, you can then see that the array gets populated with 14 elements in the first dimension, 0 to 13, and 1200 elements in the second dimension. So the first dimension represents the columns in the worksheet and the second dimension represents the rows. We can have a look at the contents of those different elements if we like by expanding the array and then clicking the plus symbol to expand each individual dimension. And you can see we get our list of titles, our list of release dates, etc, etc. So that's the absolute basics of populating the array with the results of the record set. The get rows method does have a few parameters which allow you to control exactly which data gets written into the array. If I click at the end of the get rows method and type in an open round bracket, the tooltip appears and shows you the list of three optional parameters. The rows parameter controls how many rows you get. The default value there of minus one indicates you get all the rows. The start parameter lets you refer to a bookmark if you have bookmarks in your record set. And finally, the fields parameter specifies which columns you want to get from the record set. Just to demonstrate the basics of that, if I specify a value of 10 for the rows parameter, close the round brackets. If I run the subroutine up to that point, you'll see my array is currently empty. If I hit F8 to execute that line, this time we've returned all 14 columns, but only the first 10 rows, numbered 0 to 9. So you should be able to see if you expand the array and expand one of the dimensions in there, you'll find only 10 values listed. To limit the number of columns returned to the array, we could pass a list of field names to the fields parameter of the getRows method. One way to do that would be to click after the number 10 inside the round brackets and then type in a couple of commas to skip over to the fields parameter. To make this a little easier to read, you might prefer to name your parameters. So in front of the number 10, I can say rows colon equals 10, then type in a comma, and then after that, say fields colon equals to skip to the fields parameter. 
I can pass in a list of field names using the array function. So I'm going to type in array, open up some round brackets, and then in some double quotes, write out the names of the columns whose values I want to return. I happen to know the column names quite well, but of course this does rely on you knowing the column names of the, uh, the file that you've connected to. So I'm going to say title, comma, release date, and then run time. So each one in a separate set of double quotes, separated by commas, and then don't forget the closed round brackets at the end. So if I run the subroutine up to that point, up to the breakpoint, and then hit the F8 key to populate my array, this time we'll see that the number of columns returned is three, numbered zero to two, and still 10 rows, numbered zero to nine. And you can again expand those individual dimensions and elements in the locals window to see the contents of those items. If we only ever wanted to get the first 10 rows and these three specific columns, there's no real reason to select everything from the closed workbook in the first place, which is what this select statement is currently doing, select all columns from that specific worksheet. We can specify the column list and the number of rows we want to return in the original select statement. To demonstrate that, I'm just going to comment out the extra parameters I've added to the get rows method by typing in a single quote character in front of the closed round brackets. I've made sure there's a space there after get rows as well. And then in the select list, if I wanted to list out the specific columns I want to return, I can type those column names in, in a set of square brackets. So we'll have, sorry, uh, title, release date, comma, run time. So if I run the subroutine up to the breakpoint again, and then hit F8 to execute that line, we'll see that we get the first three columns, but again, we're back to selecting all 1200 rows. We can also specify the number of rows returned in the select statement by adding the top keyword. So just after the select keyword, we can say top, followed by the number of rows we want to return. So I'll go for 10 again. And again, if I run the subroutine up to the breakpoint and then hit F8, we'll see the array gets populated and we get those same three columns and 10 rows. And again, you can expand that to check that the contents of the array are the same as last time. Just one final thing to mention. What if you did want to use the record set again after applying the get rows method to it? As a quick, simple example, let's say you did want to write the record set contents into sheet one. I'm going to write a line of code below the get rows method that will do that. I'm going to reference the worksheet using its code name. So sheet one dot range a one dot copy from record set and then refer to the RS variable. If I just show you the worksheet is empty at the moment and then run the subroutine up to its breakpoint. So we can see if we hit F8, we populate the array by using the get rows method and then we try to apply the copy from record set method to the range A1, reading the content of the record set again. So that works. And then if I use F8 just to skip through to the end of the subroutine, the unfortunate thing is when I look back at the worksheet, the worksheet is completely empty. The reason that happens is that the get rows method moves the cursor to the end of the record set to read all of its contents. And when I apply the copy from record set method, there's nothing below the cursor to read from. So what I need to do is make sure that my cursor is moved back to the beginning of the record set before I attempt to use it again. I can do that by saying rs dot move first. Then if I run the subroutine again up to the breakpoint, hit F8 to populate the array, move the cursor back to the first record, and then the next time I run the copy from record set method and have a look back at the worksheet, it has now printed out all 10 rows from the record set. So there we go, that's the basics of using a record set to populate an array using the get rows method. I appreciate we haven't really done anything with the array after populating it, but that's I think is sufficient to answer the original question, which was how to populate the array in the first place. Hope you found that one useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.